one thing I tell my coaches, and they have to believe this or they can't coach with me, is that I don't care how much you know until the kids, all of you guys, know how much you care. Okay? I don't care how smart you are as a coach. I don't care how many X's and O's you can draw. What I care about is how much the coaches care about the kids. Okay? So why I'm here today as a football coach is not to talk to you about X's and O's, but to really just talk to you about how much I care about you and how I want you to succeed, how Coach Morgan wants you to care, how Coach Gonzalez wants you to care, how all your coaches in the room care. They care not because they want to go out and get <coughs> seven on 17. They care because they want you to be the best people. Okay? So I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. I really do appreciate it. 904 Elite, okay, one of the things that I want you to think about when we start and when we finish, okay, is that everything that we do and everything that I do personally in my life when I get up out of the morning to bed in the morning is I think about I'm going to start strong and I'm going to finish strong, okay? So one of the things that I believe in is the finish strong attitude. So what does that mean for 904 Elite, okay? And so one of the things that 904 Elite is about, okay, is more than just football. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but this is the actual scattergram chart that Coach puts out to people when he says, this is what we're all about. We're about character development. We're about player training. We're about physical development. We're about recruiting. We're about team training. We're about college exposure. So what you're getting in this program is a well-balanced, well-rounded approach. Okay, to learning the game of football, but also learning the game of life. So the program's beliefs, okay, so a little bit different, I want to talk to you about beliefs and attitudes, okay? You can believe just about everything you want. You can believe anything you want, but do you have the right attitude to succeed at it? Do you have the right attitude to succeed at it? So some of the things that 904 is about some of their beliefs, striving for personal development, okay? Coach wants every one of you to individually develop. So if you're over here progressing at a different rate than you're progressing, okay, that's okay. You all don't have to be the best right now. It's about where you start and where you finish. It's always about where you finish in life. It's not where you start things. So you can start slow, maybe in the game tomorrow, somebody makes a mistake. Maybe you make a phone interception. Maybe you don't get where you want to get to tomorrow. But then the next day it's a little better and a little better and a little better. It's always the end game that we want to think about. He talks about creating self-discipline, okay? Self-discipline is, are you on time, okay? Are you going to do your workouts? Do you show up when the workouts are called? Is this the kind of thing that discipline, what kind of discipline? Are you doing your homework on time? Are you turning your tests in? Because I can tell you right now, the first thing, the first thing that a college coach is going to look at is your transfer. The first thing. And if you don't qualify for their school, they're going to say, I'm sorry, but we can't get you in. Doesn't matter how great an athlete you are, it matters how good a student you are. So one thing I can tell you is, Grades matter, okay? And I know you've heard it a thousand times, but I have a junior right now at Tom Peter High School who has a 3.8 grade point average, and we're not looking to go to Alabama. We're not looking to go to USC. We're looking to go to the best school we can find that plays football. Because you know why? Because you're going to be playing, you're going to be working a lot longer than you will ever play football, okay? I played football in high school. I played football in college, and one day I broke my back, and I went from being an NFL football player potential to a nobody. And what I had to figure out was, well, what am I going to do now? Why am I here, and what am I going to do now? I think all the coaches in this room who have played football before will tell you, at some point, there was somebody better than them. At some point, they weren't going to make it as a football player. So one thing they had to figure out was, what is the next 50 years of my life going to look like? Because football is about, let's see, from the time you're about 8 to about the time, maybe if you're 18, and I will tell you, the pinnacle of your football career, unless you're a superstar, is your high school senior year. From 
downhill it goes from there most of the time, unless you have the right attitude, unless you have the right discipline. Do you inspire passion? Passion is a wonderful thing. One of the things that people say to me all the time is, Coach, you're passionate. You're passionate about what you believe. The two things I want people to believe is that I'm passionate about what I believe, but I'm also passionate about right, my attitude. I want it to come out every single day. Now, I'm a Christian. So what I try and do is I'm trying to be passionately Christian every day. Try and help people, try and give back, try and help as many people get where they want to go in life. I want every one of you kids in this room to succeed. Every one of them. Okay? And if I can help you, I will help you. I got two kids on my team right there. Okay? Have I helped you? Okay? Am I willing to help you? I'm willing to do anything I can to help you. Okay? Because I'm passionate. I have the right attitude. You know why? Because I don't have an agenda. These kids can't do anything for me. They're not going to make me into a better coach. They're not going to make me into a superstar human being. What they're going to do is they're going to represent the qualities and the things that I teach them. And so someday they'll come back and they'll say, Coach Awad, thank you for caring about me when I was 15. Because now I'm 30. And the things that I learned from you then are the things that I do now with my family, with my kids. The things that I learned from you, I can take on in life. That's passionate, okay? Passionate coaching. Be internally competitive, okay? And I don't really believe in being internally competitive. If I have to motivate you to be a good football player, then you're not internally competitive, okay? When you get out of the morning and you want to succeed more than you want to breathe or sleep, you're competitive. I'm competitive in everything I do. I'm competitive at work. I'm competitive at coaching. I'm competitive at friendships. I'm competitive with my wife. I'm competitive with my kids, but not in a bad way. Not the kind of competition that you all think about. Like, I'm going to beat you, and i got swag. No, I'm competitive in that I want the best for everyone. Okay? So being unselfish through role acceptance is another thing. Not everybody can be the quarterback. Not everybody can be the wide receiver. Not everybody can be the running back. In fact, one of the things that people don't want to ever recognize is the old line. Right? Think about on your teams. Who gets the glory? And who doesn't? Okay? Who accepts the role of being the O-line? Who does what team matters most? Okay? Not say it, but does it. Okay? So being unselfish through the role. So if Coach Morgan asks you to do something, <coughs> it's not what you're used to doing. Or you're not used to being treated that way or told that way, but he needs you to play that role. Okay? That's what 904 is about, is being able to unselfishly accept what he's asking you to do and what your coaches are asking you to do. Caring yourself in class and regard. Okay? So, do I walk in here with my pants down, right? Pants on the ground? Is that me? Is that what I'm going to do? Okay? I'm not going to do that. Okay? I'm going to come in here and respect you all. Okay? Alright? The way you look, the way you dress, the way you speak, the way you shake hands and look at the man in the eye, that all matters. It matters to get into college, it matters with your coaches, it matters with your parents. The greatest compliment that I ever get is when people come up to me and say, your children act like gentlemen and ladies. Okay? Because I got three kids, and I don't care if they come up and say, hey, they're great players. What I care about is if they come in and say, your son's a gentleman, your son is unselfish. Your son is willing to do things that other kids aren't willing to do because he doesn't have anything in it. He's just willing to be kind and caring and loving. And that's matters. Caring yourself, your presence, you know, do you sleep, do you get in class and do you, do you lay back in the chair like this? Okay? Do you not look at people when they're talking to you? Do you wear your hat sideways? Okay? All these things tell me that you don't care about yourself or anybody else, okay? It's cool, coach. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool to be cool, right? Is it? What's that going to do for you? How much money are you going to make from that? What kind of future are you going to have? I mean, who's our, who's our mentors, right? Our mentors are rock stars. 
Our mentors are people that are on Jerry Springer show. I mean, all this stuff you see on social media, everything you see out there on TV, it's all about selling to make money. It's not about representation of what you ought to be. If you want to know what it's like to be the kind of person you should be, go look at Jesus Christ. He's the guy you want to be. You don't want to be Chris Wayne, okay? Or Little Wayne, or any of these other guys. They're not role models. They're actors. They're all actors. You realize that most of the guys that you know who they are, their names aren't even those names, right? They got stage names, because that's not who they really are. You don't know who they really are because you don't spend any time with them. But think about it. How you look, how you act, how you treat people, how you treat your coaches, how you treat your mom and dad, how you treat your friends, how you treat strangers, that matters, okay? And there's an old saying, and the saying goes, okay? The saying goes that when nobody's watching, what are you really doing? Because that's character. Character is when nobody is watching, okay? You're not on stage, you're not with the bright lights, okay? Character is when nobody's watching. Are you going to do the right thing? Are you going to say to your friend, no, I'm not smoking dope with you? Are you going to say, no, I'm not drinking? No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that because that's not what I stand for. I know a kid right now who's going to give up his scholarship in a sport and come home because he can't be on that team anymore because all the people on the team smoke dope and drink. That's what they do in college. So if your friends are smoking dope and they're drinking and they think that that's the way to get through life, Okay? I can promise you it's not. Okay? Be organized. Focus on the detail. Okay? Being organized is making sure your books are right, making sure you have your cleats, making sure you got your equipment at the night before the game. You got it all organized and you know where it is. Make sure you learn your playbook. Make sure you know what your coaches expect you to do. Okay? There's a rule in my house. If you show up at the game, you don't have your equipment, you don't play, okay? Go sit in the car. My kids never, ever forget their equipment. They never come unprepared, because if they do, they don't get to play, okay? That's my rule in my house. So those are some of the things that 904 stresses, and that's in your playbook, okay? And you need to really focus on those things, because they're important, okay? But what about you as a person, individually, Okay? So like every one of you is part of 94 Elite, but when you scatter in months, you're going to be on your teams. Okay? And each of you has a challenge. It may be that you're competing for a position. Maybe it's that you're going, to, you're going for quarterback or wide receiver or running back and there's a guy in your place. Are you going to show leadership or are you just going to go through the motions? Are you going to give it 110% or are you going to give it 50%? Okay? Are you going to compete or are you not going to compete? Are you going to compete every day or are you going to compete once a week? Are you going to show up to practice late or are you going to show up to practice early? Are you going to work and throw the ball 30 more times after practice when everybody leaves? Are you going to run those extra sprints? Are you going to lift those extra weights? Ask yourself, why am I doing this? Okay? I've asked my son a hundred times, why are you playing football? Don't tell me because you want me to, Dad, because that's not the answer, okay? It's not about me. It's not about my family. It's not about the glory. I got my trophies, okay? Each of you have to ask, ask yourself the question of why. Why? What are you playing for? Are you playing for your dad who got killed or your dad that's in jail? Are you playing for your sister? Are you playing for your mom? Are you playing for yourself? Are you playing for getting the NFL? Are you playing because you want a college scholarship? Are you playing because you want an education? Because you want a job? Because you want to make money? Because you want to have a family? Okay? How many people in this room, and I'm going to raise my hand first, come from a broken home, doesn't have a mom or dad? I do. Anybody else in this room? Okay? Raise your hand. It's all right. You don't have to be embarrassed. You got a mom and dad? You got a coach? Coach is one. I'm one. Okay? You know how hard it is? To, to get through life without mom and dad there and brothers and sisters supporting you, okay? The fact that you all did not raise your hands, 
you have better odds of succeeding than me. Okay? You have better odds of succeeding because you have a mom and dad and you have people who care about you. Okay? I did. I had to fight for every single thing that I ever got in life. And I failed a bunch of times, but I kept trying. And I kept trying. And I kept trying and I kept trying. And the reason I'm here today is because of God's blessings and God's guidance. Not because I'm wonderful, but because God gave me a chance and I did something with it. Okay? No matter what the adversity of not having a dad around, of being around people that I shouldn't be around, or getting in trouble, or whatever it was that I went through, I always thought if I could just get to the next phase, if I could just keep working, if I could just get to this, if I, could, if I kept figuring out why, why, why do I want to go to college? Why do I want to get a job? Why do I want to get married? I just celebrated my 20th wedding anniversary. Okay? I've been married longer than my parents ever in their all combined lives. Okay? I wanted to be married. I want to be married forever. I don't ever want to get a divorce. I don't want my kids to ever go through what I'm through. Okay? <coughs> so when you think about yourself as a player and you step on that field or you step in that classroom or you step into your house, ask yourself why. Why am I doing this? Why am I studying so hard? Why am I working out so hard? Why am I playing so hard? And if football's not for you, it's okay. There's a lot of things you can do that are great. Okay? If college football's not for you, it's okay. There are plenty of great schools that will take great students with great character. So think about it. Being a captain. What is a captain? Anybody a captain on their team here? You guys? Captain? Okay. So listen to me carefully. Okay? Captains build relationships with all ages of kids. So you're a senior, rising senior? Freshman. Freshman, okay? And you're the captain of your team. So you have guys older than you, and you have guys younger than you that you build relationships with, right? That's a captain. Because you're not afraid to help anybody, older or younger. You reach out and you help. It's not about you. It's not about you being the only guy who gets all the limelight and all the stats. It's about you helping your team because it takes 11 guys. Let me tell you a quick story. In Pop Warner, we had 18 kids on my team. We were down 34-6 at halftime to St. Augustine. Three of my kids came up to me and said, I don't want to play anymore, Coach. I give up. I had to forfeit the game in the third quarter okay? because they didn't want to play anymore. And Pop Warner rules say if you go below 16, you have to fourth it. So I had to fourth it. When we showed up on Monday, they were all like, oh man, Coach Hill is going to make us run. He's going to make us, he's going to kill us. So I got out, put my expedition in the parking lot. I put the 20 kids on my team, put Derek Prince in there, we put it in neutral, and I had to push the truck around the parking lot for an hour. All 20. Okay? What's this, coach? I said, did all 20 of you push the truck around? Yes. Were you successful? Yes. What's the point of this, coach? Okay. When you get off 20, give me 11. Now, you 11 push that truck around. And they pushed it around. And the next 11 pushed it around. Then I put five of them on there. And they're all, oh, five of us can't, we can't push this. I said, well, get out of there then. Give me one. And I had each kid try and push that truck around. And you know what? Not one of them could do it. And I said, you know what? That's football. One player can't make the difference. Five players can't make the difference. It takes all of you. It takes 11 on offense and 11 on defense. It takes all of you. It takes every one of you kids in this room tomorrow to be successful, to start strong, play strong, and finish strong. So when you think about the leadership traits, this is what we say at Pontevedra High School for leadership. Integrity, knowledge, courage, decisiveness, initiative, tact, justice, enthusiasm, bearing yourself, endurance, unselfishness, loyalty, judgment. Okay? If you have all those characteristics as a captain or a leader on your team, you will be successful. Not in football, but in life. Because if you have all those 14 traits, nothing can stop you. 
okay, for being successful. So is this really about football? Not really. It's really about life. That's what 904 is about. 904, you may think you're here because it's about football. Your coaches may be talking about football. Tomorrow on the football field, it may be about football. But that's for how long? How long is your game, coach? Game's about three hours. So the game's three hours. So three hours, we're going to focus on football, right? But in football, we're going to put all these ingredients into the football soup, OK? Sportsmanship, working together, caring about each other, unselfish play, high-fiving everybody, working together, caring about each other, playing as a team. And when those three hours are over, you're still a 904 elite athlete. You're still a 904 elite athlete. You still go home and you show leadership. Show leadership in your home. Show leadership with your brothers and sisters. Show leadership with your mom and dad. Don't ask your mom and dad, what can I do? Say, let me do it. Give me something to do. So one of the things that I've been as a football coach, I have seen. Okay? So let me see. If I'm going to name some of these things, I want you to think about if you've seen them too. Unfairness. Favoritism. Prejudice. Ridicule. Judgment. That's just from the coaches and the parents. Because as far as I'm concerned, most of the coaches and the parents are what screw up the game. You kids are what the game's about. It's all about you. But these people, most of the time, forget that. And what they think about is themselves or their agenda. And you know what? Guess what? That's going to be the way you face life for the rest of your life. Because when you get out of the work world, or you go to college, and you were the superstar, like I saw Derrick Henry play against Bulls and win, get 12,000 yards, and I, Derrick Henry's a friend of mine, and I went up to Derrick, and I said, Derrick, you're a great player in high school. Now you've got to go be a great player in college. But better yet, I want you to be a great human being in college. Be the representative of what a great player is all about. And he said to me, guess what, coach? I got to start over. Okay? So it doesn't matter how much success you have, it's always going to be the next step, the next stage, the next experience, the next thing you do. And are these things going to be with you, or are they just going to be, oh, we just played football and it was just that and that and the other, and now I'm going to go get into drugs, or I'm going to go, you know. I have five kids off my popcorn team at Lakeshore. Do you all know where that is? You know where Lakeshore is? Lakeshore is over on Cassett and Park, okay? Five kids on my national championship team are in jail right now. First degree murder, okay, or attempted first degree murder. Three of them over drugs, two of them over stupid fights. Okay? It's not good. These kids learned better. They were taught better. But you know what? They didn't get this. So when they got done with football and they got done dealing with their coaches and they got done dealing with mom and dad and the lights turned off, what did they do? They took the easy path out and instead of trying to find a way to be successful, they found a way to get themselves in jail. Okay? So what happens when your home life is a wreck? What happens when your friends offer you drugs? What happens when your buddy's drinking alcohol and he's your best friend? And he says, well, you're not drinking with me, so you're not cool, you're not my friend anymore. What happens when girls get in the way? Girls are a problem, guys, OK? I'm going to tell you, they are a problem, OK? My daughter is a 12-year-old, and she's got sixth grade girlfriends. And they are the meanest kids I've ever met in my life. They're the sweetest, and then they're the meanest. And when they get in the way, sometimes they cause you to make bad decisions. Bad decisions lead to bad consequences, and bad consequences get you out of what your goals are. Okay? So, look, do I think y'all ought to have girlfriends? Yes. Do I think that y'all ought to have friends that are girls? Yes. But be aware that their goals and objectives are different than yours. Okay? What about your friends? Are your friends the kind of friends you should be hanging with? And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this right now. You are who your friends are. You are who your friends are. So my friend back there who's a captain, he may be the ninth grade captain of his team, but he hangs out with a bunch of drug dealers. So you know what he is? He's not the ninth grade captain. 
He's a drug dealer. If your friends are bad people, you're a bad person. I don't care how good a guy you are, I don't care how good an athlete you are, I don't care how good a football player you are. If you hang out with criminals, you're a criminal. If you hang out with drug dealers, you're a drug dealer. If you hang out with people that are smart, you're a smart person. Okay? If you hang out with friends that care about you, then they care about you, and you care about them, they're good people. You are who you hang out with. You are who you hang out with. The other thing is you see these guys going like this all the time. What do they say? Thank God, right? Thank God for my blessings. Thank God for my talent. Thank God for everything that you've done for me. Okay? Do you believe that? Is some of it show? Is Tim Tebow show? Is the, Tim Tebow says the only thing that matters in his life is what the dash is about between the day I was born and the day I died. Okay? So if you believe in God, you glorify God. You glorify God by doing what God would want you to do. You cannot be glorifying God. You can't be saying, thank you, God, when you're not doing what God asks you to do. Help that kid in your school. Help that girl in the prom who doesn't have a date who never gets a dance. You go over there and dance with her, and your friends are like, wow, why would she dance with her? Because she doesn't have a date. She doesn't have a dance. But you did something that God's going to be very happy about. And please, God. You're going to be happy when you help out somebody who can't help themselves. You're going to be glad, and God will be glad, when you do the right things at the right time when nobody's watching. There are stresses in the world, gentlemen. You're going to face it. This is a wonderful group. This is a wonderful program. But that you have to realize the influence, the impact of social media, and I know you probably talked to them a hundred times about social media, okay? The impact of girls, the impact of drugs, violence, all that stuff, it's invading our society. The only way that I know how to help you guys is to get you early, talk to you about the right things, and encourage you beyond doubt to try and stay on the right track, okay? So that the results end up positive for you, not negative. Not like the kid I mentored since the time he was 10 years old, who's in jail. Because he said, Coach, I made a mistake. He said, for, 20, for 10 years you didn't make a mistake. You stayed on the straight and narrow. I sent him to college, and in college he made a mistake. So it doesn't just end here. It ends when you die. So from here to there to the next thing is a question of choice. What are your choices? So 904, one of the things that 904 does, in and I want you to think about this, is it's not just about football. It's about physical, it's about intellectual, it's about emotional, it's about spiritual, it's about social, it's about education. I don't know if Coach stands up and says to you, grades come first, but if one of my kids comes to me and says, Coach, i got to go study because i got a big test tomorrow, you're excused. Okay? Grades come first. I don't care if I was a high school coach, it doesn't matter. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about beliefs. Okay? What do we believe? What do we believe? What does John A. Watt believe? What do you believe? What you should believe? How do you believe? What do your parents believe? Okay? Beliefs are one thing. Okay? But action is another thing. Okay? Action is another thing. So what I believe in is in order to take a belief and turn it into a positive action, you have to have the right attitude in your brain. Your attitude when you get up out of the morning. I get up every morning and I say, thank you, God, for another day. Okay? Because I get to go out and do it again one more day. I don't know whether I'm going to wake up tomorrow, but I know I'm up right now. So my attitude is I can either have the right attitude or I can have the wrong attitude. I can either have a positive attitude or I can have a negative attitude. So what is the finish strong about? Okay? What's that all about? And how does it relate to you guys? Okay? Football is 5% talent. Listen to me, trust me on this. It's 5% talent and 95% attitude. You can have the best football player in the world, but if he's got a bad attitude, he's not going to be a good football player. So one thing that happened in 2008, a friend of mine, he was very, very interested in the whole concept of turning attitude into action. So he created what's called the Finish Strong Attitude. 
and I'm going to read it to you. And Coach has got it. He can email it or text it to you if you want to keep it. Or if you email me or text me, I'll get it to you. Finish strong attitude. To possess a mindset or a philosophy to perform at an exceptional level. To exhibit courage in the face of, direct and in front of, adversity. Refusing to accept, admit, or willingly mediocrity. A philosophy of living, a great moral power, life with no regrets. One thing I tell my son all the time is, I don't care what you do, as long as you give it your best and you have no regrets at the end. Because that's all that matters, okay? Don't tell me if I could have, would have, should have. You just go do it and say, I did my best, no regrets. So my friend who wrote this basically said, you know what? There's three things you can do in life. You can either give up, give in, or give it all you got. So Drew Brees, who you all know, came along and my friend Dan said, Drew, I got this finished strong concept and I want you to read my book and I want you take this attitude back to New Orleans. So Drew read the book. Drew endorsed it, said this is one of the greatest books ever. I gave Coach a copy of the book called Finish Strong for the Teen Athlete. Drew Brees went home. He said, give me the book. I'm going to order a hundred of them. Give me some wristbands, which I got a whole bag of them for you guys, so you can all have them. It looks like a Finish Strong band. And he went back to New Orleans in 2008, and he created the Finish Strong New Orleans Saints. Okay? And the Finish Strong New Orleans Saints, this picture was posted on the wall in the locker room, and it was a belief that they lived by all year long. We are going to start strong, and we are going to finish strong. In 2009, the day before the finish of the Super Bowl, on the front page of the New Orleans paper, it said, Finish Strong, Saints. Finish Strong, Saints. You remember what happened, right? The Saints won the Super Bowl. They used to be called the Aints because people would wear bags on their heads to come to the games because they were such a bad team. Okay? Drew Brees and Sean Payton changed all that. Now, I know there's all this stuff about the bounty and all that, but I'm not talking about that today. I'm talking about 2008 when they said, we can finish strong. And the New Orleans Saints won the Super Bowl. So attitude, gentlemen, attitude. So this year, I decided that what I was going to do was I was going to take a finish strong side with me to every game, okay? And my two kids right there will tell you that I talk about this all the time with them. No matter how much adversity we face, right? We had four kids when we played St. Augustine the weekend before, 16th birthday, dad rents them a limo. <coughs> they get four girls and four guys, two 1.75 liters of vodka and a bunch of Xanax. And they take a bunch of pills and drink a bunch. And I'm preaching to them, finish strong, right? These four kids, three of them overdosed and end up in the hospital, almost died. I had to suspend them for the biggest game of our year against St. Augustine, okay? Four of our critical starters, okay? I wouldn't let them come to practice. In fact, they did 100 bleachers. They ran the track. They weren't allowed to practice with us. I should have suspended them for the rest of the season, but I gave them a break. And I said, I'm going to give you another chance, okay? Because somebody gave me a chance. One time I made a mistake, we'll give you a chance. Okay? Adversity, gentlemen, we had adversity. Okay? Against Creekside, we're 5 0. Creekside brings down 11 starters from their varsity team to play us. JV team. If y'all don't know, you can use 11th graders on JV. They bring down 11 starters of their 10th and 11th grade that start for their varsity to come play us. Okay? We're down, what, 14 nothing in the first quarter? And the wheels are coming off. And I am screaming at them, okay? Adversity, okay? You guys are going to face it. How are you going to respond? 
Are you going to wilt? Are you going to just pack it in? Are you going to finish strong? We won a game 41-30. Okay? Because we came back. Because we never gave up. Because we knew we were going to face adversity. We knew we were going to face the things that were going to be wrong. But we kept fighting. Okay? Every one of these kids signed this at the end of the year. Okay? Because this represented 60 kids that started on my team and 60 kids that finished. I didn't have one kid quit. I didn't have one email from any parent. I didn't have one complaint from any coaches or any kids. Because we all believe that this mattered, okay? And that we could do it. And by the way, we finished eight and up. Because we had the right attitude. The week of the national championship week, University Christian. Anybody here played for University Christian? No? Okay. University Christian hadn't won a playoff game in 14 years. And you see players about to walk in, so. Okay. So 14 years there hadn't been the playoffs. And I called Coach Penland because I played against his brother when I was in high school. And I said, you know what? You need to tell your seniors about finish strong. And I want to send you 14 of these wristbands for their seniors. And I want you to tell them the story at the beginning of the week. And I want you to preach to them. I want you to take this sign. When he was holding up the state championship trophy, there were two touchdown underdogs and they won the game. His finish strong band was holding up the trophy, just like Drew Brees was when he was holding up the Super Bowl. It works if you believe it. It works if you have the right attitude. It works if you say to yourself, I can start strong, I can play strong, I can finish strong no matter what the adversity is, I can finish. So Lou Holtz said, attitude. How you respond to the challenge in the second half will determine what you become after the game, whether you're a winner or a loser. It's not where you start the game, it's where you finish it. Are you going to finish strong? It's not what happens to you, it's how you choose to react that makes the difference. Vince Lombardi said, I firmly believe that any man's finest hour, his greatest fulfillment to all he holds dear, is that moment when he has worked his heart out for a good cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle victorious. So not a four elite. The goal here is to tell you guys about the attitude of finish strong. Starting strong, your program starts tonight. It's going to start tomorrow on the field. It's going to end in four weeks, five weeks from now. Okay? No matter what the adversity, you're going to start and you're going to finish it. The question is, are you going to choose to finish it as strong as you started? Okay? So regardless of what came before or what has yet to come, what matters most right now is how I choose to respond to the challenge before me. Will I lie down or will I fight? The choice is mine, and I choose to finish strong. Thank you. Appreciate it.